everyone, it's Elizabeth from Alpus Astrology at alpusastrology.com. Thanks for joining me today. So today is my take on the June 2023 astrology. As always, uh, you get to choose what you would like to do with these energies. Nothing is predetermined for you. So this is an interesting month, June 2023. We have the influence of a few things in terms of like the tone. So we have obviously the influences of the two luminaries, the moons, which is going to be Sagittarius and Gemini. And these signs are what are called mutable signs. Um, they are flexible. They're able to change their minds. Um, they uh, So it's that kind of thing that you're going to have as a base uh, influence. But what's interesting is, is that we have a lot of Taurus uh, in the chart as well. Taurus, of course, is a, a fixed sign and it doesn't like to um, change things. So these are kind of opposing forces in some ways. But from a positive standpoint, I would say that having something immovable <laughs> like Taurus and then something that's constantly changing, uh, Gemini for sure, but Sagittarius is thrown in there too. I think it gives a, some sense of harnessing changes uh, in a positive way. And if we combine um, this whole thing of Taurus, uh, Gemini, and Sagittarius, um, we're really looking at here uh, trade, right? Trade uh, from a standpoint of local trade, as well as trade, foreign trade, uh, is in the mix here. Um, certainly travel is also featured, short-term travel for Gemini and long-term travel for um, Sagittarius. And of course, Sagittarius uh, rules the law too, as well as publishing. From the standpoint of the law though, when we mix um, the Taurus influence there uh, with Sagittarius, I would say this is uh, uh, laying down the law. So we may see a little bit of that too. Uh, the other uh, overarching influence, which will go on past June, of course, is going to be Venus that is in Leo, uh, and Mars is in there too. And the important thing to note here is that both Venus and Mars in Leo in June will be direct. Now, we will have um, the uh, shadow period happening, but I would say this is a really positive influence for those that are starting relationships. Um, Leo is all about true love. It's about children too. Um, and certainly the creative process, right? And being authentic. So I would say for those folks that start relationships in June, uh, try to aim for being authentic um, and aim for asking, is this true love? All right. And I've done a video actually on the Venus retrograde, uh, actually the whole Venus uh, period, including the direct. I'll put the link below if you want to look at it. I look at all signs and ascendants. So right off on the first, we have Jupiter conjuncting the North Nodes. Recall that the North Nodes are just about ready to leave Taurus. They're around three degrees of Taurus. And remember, the nodes go backwards. So as that those nodes get close to zero degrees of Taurus, we know that we are going to have uh, the next sign come into view. And that'll be around mid-July 2023 when the North Nodes go in uh, Aries. But right now, we've got Jupiter in Taurus conjuncting those North Nodes right at the beginning of the month. So this says to me um, a few things, but it certainly brings a groundedness to, um, to our future destiny as a collective. So I expect something will come in here with regards to maybe some guidance, uh, Jupiter at its best can be guidance. Jupiter at its best can be guidance, a teacher, uh, that type of thing, some kind of um, uh, expert in an area that uh, lends its mentorship to you. Um, Jupiter in Taurus, just as an influence, because now we have Jupiter in Taurus uh, mid-May, all the way through a little bit after mid-May 2024. And I think this is a lovely influence here. Uh, I see this really as 
a consolidation uh, of what we are to grow into. That's what I really remember. Jupiter is all about growth. Uh, it's also about illuminating. It can bring in benefits for us as well. Um, but I really felt that the growth part of this, because Taurus, of course, is all about um, growing things, uh, building things, um, I really saw this whole time period of Jupiter and Taurus being a consolidation of what we're going to grow into. So that influence over the next year or so with Jupiter and Taurus will be in that direction. So our first illumination is going to be a full moon in Sagittarius, and that will be on the 3rd of June. It's at 13 Sagittarius, 18 minutes, and we know at every full moon, we have the sun in the opposite sign at 13 Gemini, 18 minutes. It'll occur at 8.43 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And what we look at next is the ruler. So the ruler of Sagittarius, of course, is Jupiter. And Jupiter has just gone into Taurus. And we know that at this full moon, Jupiter and Taurus is still conjunct that north node in Taurus too. Now, what's interesting is that whole configuration of Jupiter conjuncting the north nodes at this full moon in Sagittarius uh, will square Pluto, which is at zero degrees of Aquarius. So this can have some challenges. You know, squares are about challenges. And again, we go back to what I said at the beginning, that Jupiter wants to grow in Taurus. And in many areas, including real estate, food production, that sort of thing, as well as something to do with our money too. And so there's just some challenges here. Certainly if you have something, say, around, uh, let's just say the zero to three degree mark, um, of uh, either Taurus or uh, Aquarius here, that square will be affecting you directly and it may present some challenges to you with regards to you wanting to move ahead and grow something. Now, as I always say with uh, squares, squares gives us opportunities too. We don't want everything flowing freely all the time because then we don't put the effort into it. So squares require us to put some effort. Is that such a bad thing? I don't think so. And, you know, both Jupiter and Taurus are relatively supporting building types of energies, right? Uh, the other thing that we have, of course, is Mercury will be conjuncting uh, Uranus. And I really saw this as sort of uh, with, with Mercury being the mind, as well as communications. But here I really saw an association with original um, unique ideas. So certainly if you've got a, a time period where you're trying to develop unique original ideas in whatever it is, let's just say art um, or something like that, or maybe even in some form of gardening because Taurus rules that too, right? Um, I would say this is a good full moon to maybe uh, make some announcements with regards to some original thinking that you've been doing, you may get some real support here for that with this conjunction. Surprising, unexpected support maybe too. You may also have, if you've got this aspect here, you may also have um, some surprising announcements to make. Um, that may occur here too. Now, we have Venus that is in Cancer at 28 degrees. So we know that that's going to be opposite Pluto, even though Pluto is still in, technically, Aquarius uh, going retrograde uh, at zero degrees. It's close enough in orb that we're going to say that Venus is opposite Pluto. And so these are karmic attractions. And um, so I would say that for those folks that uh, feel... Um, a love relation that's come has come in that feels faded, that's what this aspect brings in for you. Karmic attractions. Um, I guess it just give it some time to develop, certainly with the Venus retrograde going to be happening uh, officially mid-July. You know, take the long view of it may very well be a karmic faded positive relationship, but maybe take the summertime period to look at it carefully with the Venus retrograde.
So certainly Jupiter uh, ruling this sign of Sagittarius emphasizes things like uh, foreign connections, foreign people, foreign countries, also travel. So I, th I got the impression here of certainly those types of things will be coming to some kind of culmination. If you have something around the 13 degree mark of Sagittarius, like an ascendant or a sun, this could definitely be a time of endings or culminations for you. Maybe you're ending a trip. That's very Sagittarius, especially a foreign trip overseas. Um, maybe some legal matter is tied up that's positive for you. Publishing is also another big thing with regards to Sagittarius. So there may be some folks uh, that have this degree, 13, 14 degrees of Sagittarius and or Gemini, um, that are actually publishing something. And that might be tied in for some folks with what I spoke about earlier, that whole Mercury conjunct Uranus, right? With original thinking, original ideas. Right, so from the 9th to the 13th of June, we have Jupiter at five degrees of Taurus. Now this is a heads up for you because this is the degree point that we will have our final eclipse that will be in Taurus. And that'll be on the 28th of October, 2023. And so there will be something that comes up between the 9th and uh, the 13th. Um, you know, more from a, um, a global perspective, but if you've got something around the five degree Taurus mark or a five degree Scorpio, um, there may be something that comes to light for you. Jupiter may shine a big light for you on some area of your life that will come to some kind of culmination or conclusion at that eclipse on the 28th of October. So pay attention to what comes up at this time. Um, as I said, Jupiter is all about all things foreign. It's travel. Um, it's also the sign of the teacher too. So all these things may be in the mix here during this time period. Um, I mean, it could play out something as simple as somebody, you know, taking their final boards for being literally a teacher. And that on the 28th of October or around that time period, that door closes and this person's an official teacher. It can also be an advisor too. And especially as it's connected with Taurus, it can be a financial advisor too. Now, the other thing that could happen at this time is literally an advisor of some sort to do with um, money or, or even foodstuffs um, and any kind of um, food growing, that type of thing. Um, this could have somebody come forward um, that suggests a change. It can be a change in the money markets too. But I would say it's going to be probably someone that comes forward to introduce something at this time. And, and we know if we listen even a little bit to the news, or read anything, that sort of thing is going on behind the scenes. But this is more an official uh, type of thing that won't really come to some kind of fruition until that end of October this year, where there'll be a culmination point of some sort. Now, Jupiter as an influence too um, can increase things, right? So this could increase inflation as well. That might be another thing that comes forward around this time, 19th to 13th of June, but that maybe wanes off at the eclipse where we see the end of something, a culmination of the ending of it. So on the 12th of June, Pluto retrograde will dip back into Capricorn at 29 degrees. And so this could just have some, um, you know, vestiges <laughs> of the old guard wanting to still exert its effects of some sort and pulling a power play or trying to pull a power play. But because Pluto is retrograde, it will not, it will not take full effect here for sure. It can be those in power working behind the scenes too, right? Where we don't see it. All right, so on the 17th of June, we have a new moon in Gemini. So happy new year to all my Gemini viewers and happy new year to my daughter. 
This will be at 26 Gemini of 43 minutes. And of course, we know the moon and the sun will be together at this time. It's at 9.38 uh, p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And the ruler of Gemini, of course, is Mercury. And where is Mercury? Mercury is going to be sextile Venus in Leo. So this puts kind of a, a real nice spin on things. I would say uh, royalty is going to be highlighted again, maybe with some messages of some sort um, or opportunities. It certainly speaks to love, generally speaking, love messages coming in here. Um, yeah, we've got this whole uh, Leo thing starting to play out as well around this um, new moon in Gemini in a, a very beautiful way, right? Um, Mercury is in Gemini at this time, so this is another positive influence for this new moon. When we look at Gemini, we are talking about, you know, short distance travels, uh, trade and commerce, um, that type of thing, uh, siblings, and, uh, you know, early education or short courses are also indicated, and writing of any sort. So certainly this new moon, if you've got these, uh, anything aspecting around this, say, 26 degree mark of Gemini, this could be a whole new beginning for some folks with regards to maybe a writing project of some sort. We will have Saturn retrograde at seven degrees uh, of Pisces till the 4th of November, right? Starting at this time. And Pluto will widely square uh, the north nodes at two degrees of um, Taurus. And so there may be um, some challenges with regards to some people in power accepting the fact that we're moving on, um, you know, that Pluto is going to <laughs> go into Aquarius on a permanent basis for 20 years coming up pretty soon. It won't officially really get in there to 2025, um, but it's going to be in Aquarius enough in 2024 to exert quite an effect, quite a positive effect, especially on the collective, having things be more fair. Jupiter will be sextiling a retrograde a Saturn. I don't see this as a negative thing. I see this as a time to potentially rewrite some of the rules. And if we bring it up to a collective level, this could be rewriting some of the rules uh, with regards to foreign people and foreign nations. So this may translate into um, any um, immigrants, that type of thing it may have to be reconsidered. The rules may have to be reconsidered with that respect, right? Venus will widely uh, conjunct uh, Mars in Leo. They never really conjunct completely, um, but hey, they're dancing around there very nicely in June. And so I really thought uh, June was going to be, um, especially around this uh, new moon, just a delightful time to start a relationship, um, to even develop friendships, to get into any kind of creative projects, very much favored here in June, especially at the new moon. So if that's something that you want to initiate, maybe pick this new moon uh, just afterwards, uh, maybe a day or two after the 17th uh, to pull the trigger. Um, but you can always, you know, fit the details in in the background to start off with and then make the announcements just after the new moon. But it really does support a lot of communication, positive communication, um, sales and commerce, um, and any kind of writing projects. And then with that whole Venus, um, and Mars dance in Leo. Um, it, it also, you know, children are very involved with Leo too. So there could be some folks that have some very positive interactions with their children. Um, but love, I think, is really at the uh, forefront here because, of course, Venus is involved and Mars, and these are viewed as the celestial lovers. But more on that later in July, August, and September, and even October, because Venus stays in Leo that long. Again,
again, Happy New Year to all my Gemini clients and viewers. Okay, um, we have also in June, of course, we have the sun will be increasing into Cancer. And that will be indicating our summer solstice, right? That's when the sun goes to zero degrees of Cancer. It will be at uh, 7.58 a.m. Pacific Daylight Time. And uh, Saturn will be retrograde at uh, 7 degrees of Pisces. The Sun will sextile the North Nodes. That's beautiful. Um, the Moon will be in Leo. So we've got Leo accented again at 8 degrees, um, along with Venus and Mars in Leo. So you can see really like the latter part of, of um, June, uh, especially around the summer solstice, has another big influences of Leo here. And don't forget that Leo asks us to be our authentic self, right? So at its core, um, this is a time for us to express who we really are. And maybe some of us will be expressing who we are on the stage literally on the stage, if not metaphorically in the stage of life. So there may be some people that come into some element of fame around this time as well. Um, and I'm talking about really the whole month of June um, and actually even further than that, but I'm just gonna focus on this month uh, in this video. Uh, let's see what else we've got happening. We have, um, Mars sextiling Chiron nicely, and uh, Uranus and Jupiter in Taurus. Right? That's a good one, too. And, of course, you know, Uranus, we haven't talked about Uranus being in Taurus, too, but Uranus, of course, is bringing in unexpected things at this time. Um, Uranus will be at 21 degrees at this solstice time period. And that 21 degrees is an important degree for next year, which will be in April uh, 2024, when Uranus at 21 degrees of Taurus conjuncts with Jupiter. Uh, and that I will talk about later, but certainly a very important time. So there may be something happen uh, if you've got, say, uh, some important point in your chart, like a sun, an ascendant maybe a moon or a conglomeration of planets around 21 degrees of Taurus. Watch what happens here around the solstice and um, watch what happens because there may be some significant unexpected um, event that happens next year in April 2024 for you. But that certainly um, for most of us will be a once in a lifetime event. Uh, when we talk about April uh, 2024 with that conjunction of Jupiter and Uranus. Uh, and I see it as a very positive thing. And of course, Pluto will still be retrograde at the summer solstice at 29 degrees of Capricorn. All right, so I'll just give you a little peek into July 2023. We have a full moon in Capricorn, a new moon in Cancer, and the North Node significantly will go into Aries. And of course, they start at 29 degrees at the end of the sign. Um, and that'll be on the 18th of July. We have Venus going retrograde officially in Leo uh, at 20, 28 degrees of Leo. And Mercury will go into Leo. All right, next I am going to go into each of your sun and or ascendant signs. Um, next. All right, Virgo. Virgo, this full moon in Sagittarius squares your sign and it involves the fourth house. And I'm going to talk about the new moon at the same time here in Gemini because that squares your 10th house. And so this whole month of June, you've got a playoff of your career, your home, family, maybe your mother, 10th house can also feature your reputation. So it's almost like I get this 
picture of these being played off back and forth all month. First of all, it's going to be some culmination with regards to your home or your family or your mother, where there's a challenge that you have to work with disparate elements to make something work in the home. But because the 10th house is opposite the 4th house, whatever you do in your home is going to affect your career as well. And I'm almost getting this feeling of, I mean, I'm doing it in order because of the moons being in order, i.e. that the 4th house is to begin with, with the Sagittarian full moon, and then the new moon later on, um, later on with the Gemini element of it and uh, your career. But I think the mix is going to be there all month. That's that's what I'm getting as an intuitive um, hit right now for you, Virgo. So what I would do is, um, you know, I'm making this, you know, just towards the first week or so of May. I would say maybe now in May, look at both these areas. Look at your career and look at your home. Is there something you need to or could adjust in those areas of your life um, to avoid having big challenges? I mean, squares also mean that, yeah, challenges are going to be there, but it also means that you've got to work at it. Um, and it might be, for some Virgos, that it's better for you to work at your career. And yet other uh, other Virgos, it's better for you to be working with regards to your home or your family. I mean, obviously, it's great to get a balance of both. But you might want to work at this now, looking at the whole layout of your home family, as well as mother, and your career, your reputation, that type of thing. And see if there's some adjustments that you can make this month in May that may alleviate some real problems with regards to these, these different houses for you. But I can tell you one thing, um, that both Sagittarius and Gemini are mutable signs and that they can change, right? They're willing and open to be flexible and change. So keep those words in mind as you are meeting with some potential challenges here where you've got to work at getting things right in the home and work at getting things right in the 10th house of career. Be flexible and be open to um, changing your mind or changing your direction in either of these areas of your life. Do that and you're going to be fine, Virgo. All right, so that whole um, Venus and Mars in Leo is going to be in your 12th house. So there might be some Virgos that have... Um, some creative project that has to be kept under wraps that's secret. It can also mean um, some uh, a love relationship has to be kept in the background and that you can't bring it out into the open for whatever reason. Um, but I think it's going to be more to do with some kind of creative projects here because there may be a tie-in uh, with that 10th house of career, right? With the new moon in Gemini. And this could also be this creative project ties into that where um, you can't bring it out into the open right now. It has to be kept behind the scenes and you're working really hard to uh, get that creative project moving forward. Um, but you're still having to attend things in your career. Uh, you know, it's like juggling, right? There may be a bit of that for you, um, Virgo. Take care, Virgo. Okay, folks, that wraps up my um, June 2023 astrology. As always, I'm always interested to hear from you. Um, I think this is going to be a very, um, a, just a really exciting month love-wise. And, um, and also fame, too. So, you know, we're talking about this Leo influence, which is so predominant, um, not only in June, but because everything is moving forward, the planets in Leo are moving forward and they're not retrograde. It's a little bit of a better month um, with regards to uh, positive results from um, potentially fame and love and creativity. These are big things that are ruled by uh, Leo. And of course, children too. 
So um, enjoy what you can enjoy. And for those that are um, coming to some level of fame with that Leo, um, I'm wishing you all the best and congratulations. All right, folks, I am going to see you next month. Please take good care of yourself. I'm always interested in hearing from you. And I'm going to wish you all the best in that month of June, um, especially with regards to true love. That's really at the heart of Leo. They just want to have true love. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye for now.